So your next film is showing this Friday, A Violent yeah. Man. Violent Man opens February 8th at uh, 10 cities across the U.S. In L.A. it opens at Universal City Walk. And it stars a football player, uh, Thomas Q. Jones? Yeah. When did you start writing A Violent Man? You know, about like six to eight months after Wild and Blue came out. So it was like 2015 or 2016, yeah. Did you have Thomas in mind for the part or he came on later? No, I had a script that, 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 that we'd written um, and I met Thomas and he and I just like buddied up and we became really good friends. Um, and I saw him act in, in a friend of mine's short film and he was phenomenal. So I showed him a script for Violent Man. I thought that was such a cool way to tell the story. Um, and he loved it. So we sat down, we kind of like tweaked the script, you know, adjusted it. And so once again, it was just a happy accident. I was on a set, something else that I was, you know, working on producing and I saw him act and he was so good um, that I was like, dude, you gotta be in my movie. So that was, that's just kind of how that happened. Wow. So you presented him with the script? Yeah. And how long did you wait for feedback from him? When... <laughs> no, Thomas and I got into it pretty quickly. Um, you know, we, uh, we, we like, I think, uh, you know, he, he'd come over to my house every, you know, two or three times, three or four times a week. And we would just watch movies, go through the script, go through the scenes, uh, tweak it so we and it happened very quick it was like it was like July we had the script or June the end of June we we had the script and by October we were shooting the movie so Thomas and I were together like every day um, leading up to it it was like we just it was at the point where we kind of like got the go and then just went were you pitching it to other people before you had even written it? Um, other actors? Yeah. No. No? No. What's it about? It's about a mixed martial artist who's a murder suspect. So it was kind of influenced by um, In a Lonely Place by Nicholas Ray starring Humphrey Bogart. It's one of my favorite films ever made, which is great noir. Um, and that's about a serial, I mean, a, that's about a screenwriter who might or might not have killed a journalist right. when she was doing an interview on him. So I, I always thought that this would be such a great way to contemporize it. Um, you know, telling it in, you know, an urban story um, in the MMA world and uh, using real MMA athletes. So we have Chuck Liddell, John Lewis, um, and those two were really fun to work with. John Lewis starred in it and he also produced it and helped do the fight choreography with me. And um, he was one of the original MMA fighters in like before UFC was even made, he was one of the first fighters um, that founded the UFC. And he then became Chuck Liddell's trainer. So we all, me, Thomas, John, and Chuck all kind of became really close buddies throughout the making of the film. So we just like, in making it, it was just such a contemporary way of telling that story. Um, it just kind of flowed really nicely. So once you finished the script, um, where else did you send it out to? Like, I, I realize you had Thomas, sounds like locked in, yeah. and wanted to do it, he's very passionate about it, but where else did you send out the script? We sent it out for a period of time. We kind of sent it out everywhere. We uh, sent out different sales companies and finance people. Um, we kind of piece peeled all of it together. Some passed, some didn't, some, some got on board. And it was one of, once again, a situation where it was like October 16th, we're shooting. Hell or high water, we're shooting. And we did. You get the camera, you get the actors, you get the script, you got the lights, DP, shooting a movie. So. Did you have representation send it out? No. So that's an interesting. What, what was your process? Are you just like getting an IMDb Pro account and, and looking up people's managers or how are you doing this? Oh, to for actors? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a casting director. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I thought you were talking about sending it out to agents and finance companies. Um, yeah, we had a casting director. So they put, uh, we, we auditioned a lot of people throughout the process, um, especially for a lot of the like ancillary roles. Um, one of them was, we cast my buddy John Scarloff, who was fantastic, who was in another film that I produced, Queen of Hollywood Boulevard. And I loved him in that film, so I wanted to use him again in this. Um, this time now I'm directing him, the other time I was producing him. Um, but my casting director pulled in some great people. We auditioned a lot. The actress who played Thomas's girlfriend, Kalila, was another weird serendipitous thing. He was on a TV show and he happened to see, he was watching the TV show that he was on and he saw her name on the same name card, that on the same card at the end as his. Turned out they had gone to college together. They had known each other for 25 years. Then like two days later, he was walking through Hollywood, bumped into her. How and we wild. were like doing this, we were casting, we were meeting all these women for this part. All of them were great. Tom said, no, Matt, you gotta meet Kalila. So I met with her and the two of them had so much chemistry and they had known each other for so long and there was like no obstacles to get behind like, oh, you know the inner workings of Thomas. They had been friends since they went to college, at, you know, 15 years ago. So how do you kind of like find a better actress to play his girlfriend that knows him very well. So it's kind of like, it was like one of those perfect moments and she happens to be an incredible actress. Um, and not only did she like bring out the best in Thomas, he brought out the best in her and their two performances like shined. Very cool, wow, that's a really cool story. So he just saw her name on the slate and then he ran into her. Yeah, they just bumped it on the How street. Bizarre. And he, we were casting that part and he said, Matt, you gotta meet this girl and she's terrific and I'm telling you she's the one. I met with them. They we met at this uh, restaurant in Hollywood, and I just had them ad lib a scene, and they did. And I was like, "What? You know, you don't even need a script for these two, you know?" Sure. Uh -huh. I mean, we did use a script, but still, it was just like they're perfect. Where is the movie shot? The majority of it? Well, some of it's shot in this apartment, to be honest oh, with cool. you. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's a beautiful place, by the way. Thank you. Um, and the rest of it shot all over Los Angeles. We shot uh, soundstage in Anaheim. We shot downtown LA. We did this great fight scene under the first street bridge in downtown LA. We shot in North Hollywood at this gym that we found. You know, shot everywhere. Shot it in 16 days, pretty much all nights, all in LA. Really, all nights, does that lend to sort of the feel of the movie or just that's how it worked out? Um, you know, I mean, you're shooting in a lot of the obstacles where like you're shooting in open businesses, right? So if you're shooting in a bar, you don't have enough money to shut down the bar during work hours. So you just go in there, there your call time's 2.30 or 3 in the morning. So your shoot's from 3.30 in the morning till 3 p.m until the bar opens, right? So you kind of got that window. Um, I also like shooting movies at night. I think it's just this, I mean, everybody is, is off, it's, it's <laughs> fun. I mean, it's a little crazy making, guys. I think we did like 12 days of nights or something like that, straight. Um, but it kind of worked out like that because of locations, actors, um, you know, it's nothing better than shooting true nights. If you're if a nighttime scene, you gotta shoot true nights. Um, so it just was one of those things just happened the way it happened.